Hey, this is Horner, and this is the last packet. It is rotational energy and momentum. Questions one and two. You have a diagram here of a ramp, and then it goes to a straight horizontal track here. And we are releasing three objects, a solid sphere, a hollow sphere, and a hollow ring, each of which have a different I value or a moment of inertia, which they would have to give you these uh, in order for you to do any calculations. However, they don't ask you any calculation questions. Instead, they set each one here and then it rolls down. They want to know what is the difference in the kinetic energy at the bottom for all three. Well, think about it. We have potential energy due to gravity here. We have kinetic energy here. It doesn't matter what it is. They all three will have the same when they get to the bottom. So the one that uh, you need to answer is letter D. All three objects have the same kinetic energy upon reaching Q. Um, for number two, it says which object has the greatest speed upon reaching Q, and that would be A. A has the smallest moment of inertia uh, by moment of inertia equations. Voila, uh, moment of inertia equations. So here we have a solid sphere rotating about its center, and that would be two-fifths. Uh, we have a hoop uh, rot rotating about its center, and it's mR squared. And uh, what was the other one that they had? So the other one that they had was a hollow ring. Oops, hollow sphere and hollow ring. So let's take a look at that hollow sphere. Um, solid sphere, uh, here is a thin shell. So that one is two thirds. So this one has still got the smallest moment of inertia compared to the ring, compared to the thin spherical shell. So it will also have the smallest uh, angular speed, and if as a smallest angular speed, and they all have the same radius, it will also have these the lowest uh, linear speed. Because remember, this is just omega times r. So so far, not a lot of energy stuff. Just very simple stuff. Things that you should be able to do without any trouble. Number three, a sphere M on one end of a string moves in a circle on a horizontal frictionless table. This is what it looks like. If the string is pulled through the hole in the table, how do the kinetic energy of the sphere and the sphere's angular momentum about the whole change? So the kinetic energy will increase because our I will decrease because our R is decreasing. And we're using MR squared here because we're using a point mass. So this string is basically not going to account much for the angular momentum or for the uh, I value here of the system. So we're really just worried about the ball. The angular momentum, on the other hand, does not change. It remains constant, and that's because L is equal to I alpha. Uh, we know that alpha is equal to the change in the speed, angular speed over the change in time. But as your angular speed changes, and it gets, uh, your angular speed gets bigger, your alpha gets bigger, or your, uh, your acceleration, rotational acceleration increases, and at the same time, your I does decrease. Remember we said earlier it decreases because your R is decreasing. So that one remains constant. Uh, for the next question, this is M4. You have an experiment where you have a bowling ball inside a cart and a bowling ball that is not in the cart. So this one is rolling. So this one is rotating, and this one is just moving linearly. Um, so they tell you all those things, and there is one meter. Uh, both travel one meter as friction brings them to rest. So both of these come to rest in a meter. Uh, the ball never slips and rolls, and the student predicts that the box will again slide one meter before coming to rest after the ball collides with it. Uh, so these two things, when they hit, they travel one meter before they stop. This one, they find out, oh my, it travels at 1.4 meters. They want to know why. Um, so here the student uh, thinks about it, and they say, uh, which of the following best explains why the student made the incorrect prediction? Friction acted on the cart in experiment one, but not on the ball in experiment two. That's not right, because there is mu s here. And this one, there is friction in the wheels, but really, that's not the reason. Uh, the ball cart in experiment one, one had more mass uh, than the ball in experiment two. No, that's not the reason either. The collision was not elastic in either. No, that's not the reason either. So it's got to be the student did not account for all of the ball's kinetic energy in experiment two. And that is correct. That person thought about linear kinetic energy, but not about rotational kinetic energy. That extra rotational kinetic energy gives it that extra 0.4 meters.
For number five, we have a skater on an icy pond. Skates toward a long board, so we're looking at this from top down. Um, the skater jumps onto the end of the board and rides the board. Uh, of the linear momentum, angular momentum, and kinetic energy, which ones are conserved for the skater board system during the collision? This is an inelastic collision, and both the angular and the linear momentum are conserved always in this inelastic collision. So that's what we're going to say. Uh, it's not going to be just linear. It's not going to be just angular. It's not going to be all three, and it's not going to be just the linear and the K. It is actually going to be these two. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the last one. This one, we have a disc supported. So here's a disc supported by a frictionless axis. It uh, has several turns, uh, string wrapped around it. The free string uh, end is connected to a block. So there's that. When the block is released, angular momentum of the blood disc block system about point chi to, uh, point P changes with time. They want to know which forces are uh, responsible for changing the angular momentum. So we know that torque is equal to I omega. Torque is also equal to force times resistance. So here at point P, this is pulling down, and it's making this thing torque. Um, and so we know that the weight of the disk is the thing that is really making the angular momentum change. So the angular mo momentum, remember, is L. That's equal to I times alpha. Notice that the angular momentum is not based on the torque. So here we all uh, were really just um, worried about uh, the alpha and the I for this thing. So weight of the block does not have anything to do with either of these. Uh, the tension on the disc would not have to do with either of these. However, the weight of the disk would, uh, because the weight of the disk, we're going to uh, divide that by 10, and that will give us the mass for our I. And then the force supporting the disk, the force that is supporting it is in the pivot point here. Uh, and that is also important, uh, because it will give us, if you remember, alpha is equal to the rotational velocity divided by that radius. So we also need the force supporting the disk. Uh, kind of a weird problem to kind of think about, but that is it. And that's the end of the multiple choice.